Hi everybody and welcome along to our glass marble colour pencil class and we're going to have a bit of fun with some very simple colours to recreate a glass marble. So just before we get started let me tell you what I'm using. So I've got um, a grey toned paper that I've just taped to my board because I need to have this at an angle so it's at about a 45 degree angle otherwise um, because of the lighting you won't be able to see the image and then let's have a look at the colors we're using we've got um, some different reds really don't worry about the names of the reds um, so I've got a deep red more of a sort of burgundy a bright poppy red and an orange then into the yellows I've got a sunburst yellow and a cadmium yellow then we have burnt umber and indigo, a nice dark brown and dark blue, and some different greys, um, just three different greys. They're cool greys and a, a light, the light ones are warm grey. I have white, and then I've got a different brand of pencil for this one, and this is um, Indian red, so we have that as well. So that's our colours. I've also got out, I didn't put it on the list, but like a sky blue, I might use a little bit of sky blue um, in some of the clear areas of the glass. So that's our tools. Let's get started. <laughs> okay, now if you're not good at drawing circles, I've got a little cup here, so I'm just going to use my cup to draw the circle. Nice and easy. Um, or you just sketch it nice and lightly. And for the sketching, either use white or a light grey. And if you're using white paper, white's not going to be any good. If you are using white paper, I'd go for sort of a mid grey. Because I'm using toned paper, I'm going to use this very light grey. I'm just going to draw around my beaker. Oops, can't see it. Let's try that again. I might do it in white if it doesn't show up for camera. The trick is holding it still. Oh, you can see it just, I think. So I'm going to tidy that up because the beacon moved a bit when I was sketching that down. Just tidy up that edge. Now, you don't want to press too hard on your colour pencils. We want to be able to layer and we're going to be using our colour pencils like paints in, in effect today. A lot of people will just block colours, but we're going to be layering our colours. So as once you've got your marble, <laughs> your marbles, I'm also going to sketch the shadow, which is quite long. The light source is low, causing this lovely long elongated shadow on the surface, so just sketching that in as well. Good, good, it's showing up on camera. I do have problems with pencils and the lighting in here. Then we're gonna go into the marble and I've got it on the screen as well. And um, hopefully that, that's helpful having it up on the screen um, or any other device that you're using to look at the object. So the next thing I want to do is pop in those highlights Still with my grey, I've got a little lozenge shape over on the right hand side. And there's a break in it. Just pop that in. And then there's some others. One there, little highlight, strange little shape at the top. Coming round. So we're just using our um, colour pencils to sketch in the main areas. Now that I'm going to start going into the red colours, but still sketching with my pencil. So I'm going to bring that band of colour in that you can see. I'm going to try and point at it. This is difficult. No, <laughs> I can't. I've got my iPad here. Easier to point here. 
So I'm going to be sketching these key shapes. So not only the outline of the red of the marble, but also some of the patterns that I see, some of the darks and lights that exist within the marble. We're going to prop those in. Down that side. There's quite a bit of clear marble. Nice and light. Follow that curve as best you can. Round we come. I'm going to sketch the obvious ones first. I'm going to put that yellow line that's coming through. And all the time, I've got a printout actually. It's not a very good printout because my print is not very good. So I'm looking at this yellow bit coming here. I'm going to pick out these shapes, the one coming here, the darks and lights. So those key shapes, that's what we're going to sketch in. I might as well have that there. We're just positioning things so we know once we start with our colours where we're going to put those different hues. There's a dark line sweeping round and down. Doing marbles this week has taken me right back to my childhood. We were always playing marbles as kids crawling around the floor. <laughs> okay, I'm looking where these come in relation to those highlights that I've put in to help me. Every marble is going to be slightly different, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, around this edge, I'm going to bring a line in, there's lighter colour around that edge, which kind of comes in and out again. I think that's more or less it. And then we've got this dark band, it's a reflection of something in the marble coming around the bottom left. It goes into the red, behind the red, and then peeks out again the other side. I'm not sure if that's something in the marble. And you can just see a sliver of glass at the bottom. So that is a definite band. As well as the things we can see in the marble itself, I want to capture this highlight section in the reflection on the table. So I'm going to pop that shape in there. And then this lighter area. Pretty much it, I think. It's quite funny when you start sketching it in. I think I went a bit wide with this band here. But suddenly you get to the other side of the marble and you realise you've not left enough room. So that was my light grey. Let's get rid of that beaker. Okay. And now we're going to start our applications of colour. And I'm going, if I show you my reds here side by side, so I've got one that I'm referring to as a poppy red, which is the lighter one, and one that's a bit darker. I think I've lost a pencil somewhere. 
Yeah, no, just those two. Um, another colour that I mentioned was Tuscan Dark. I actually haven't got a Tuscan Dark, so I supplemented it with Indian Red. And basically, it's a really dark red. It's hard to see here. If I scribble down, it's almost a brown, very dark maroon. So those are the reds. And then my oranges. So true orange. And then this one, I'm calling it orange, but it's sunburst yellow. It's like, um, it's like a deep cadmium, an orangey yellow. And my cadmium yellow light. So those are the main colours. So I'm going to start with that darker red. And we're just going to shade in. Now, I want you to start gentle. The same with all pencil mediums. If you push too hard, you're going to compress the paper. So even on this lighter area of the marble, I'm going to give it a coat in, very light coat in of this scarlety red. Avoiding the white areas. Avoid those bits that we cut out. Now initially you'll see texture from your paper when we're sketching and shading lightly. The, the, the paper texture will show through. Just remember where those highlights are that we want to avoid. The whites. And this is just a gentle base layer. We're going to adjust and brighten and add layer upon layer of reds and oranges to this. So you can probably see the texture of the paper showing through. I'm holding the pencil really low down, holding it on its side, just shading backwards and forwards. I guess there's a slight circular motion in my stroke, but nothing um, major. I'm not doing tight circles, just shading on its side. I'm going to come as far over as the yellow band. And then I want to put that yellow band in early on. I'm using that sunburst yellow, the, the more orange one. And just a medium pressure, not pushing hard. Come in. Bring that yellow band through. Now, colour pencils is one of the slower mediums, I'd say. It takes patience. And to do it correctly, you need lots of layers. There's another tiny bit of yellow. I think just over here. So I'm going to pop that in too. I'm going to overlap my yellow into the red. Not pushing hard, just shading. Once you've established that, you can go back to your red and carry on filling in the rest of the coloured area of our marble. We will add stronger pressure as we build up the layers. 
But at the moment, I just want you to keep it nice and light. The next colour we're going to be using is white and I want to capture these highlights really early on. We're going to go straight in to those big. Now with white you will find you need to give more pressure and into those highlights, that little bit at the bottom. shading over and over building up the strength of the white with multiple layers now if you are working on white paper this bit's going to be interesting for you um, we're now going to go into the light area, the clear part of the marble. Now I'm going to be laying down white. Um, if you are working on white paper, what might be best, I'm just going to change it a little bit. Generally, I don't outline things, but this glass marble needs some kind of outline, um, particularly where the glass is just reflecting. And if you look at that photo, there is an outline around the glass and it's caused by the shadows. So before we go back into that white, I'm gonna take my gray. What is this one? This is a warm gray five, if that means anything to anybody. It's just a nice gray. Um, make sure your pencil's nice and sharp. I'm changing the order of things just in case you're working on white. Very sharp pencil coming around the orbit. Don't want you to make this a thick line, it needs to be very slight. I'm gonna stop in this bottom corner because the red will do the work for us there. So it's mainly the top, left, right and top. We just leave that middle bit where the red is going to dominate. Okay, so if you are working on white paper, I would suggest using a light grey and completing this bit. I'm going to start with white for this. And we're going into the clear part of the marble. Shading gently. And I'm going to cover the whole area of the glass going up to that dark band. Don't feel the temptation, don't give in to the temptation to push hard too soon. Sound like a midwife. <laughs> Just shading. Turn that pencil on its side. Get good contact. I missed the highlight area. Oh no, I didn't catch, see, I didn't draw it in. I'm going to pop that in now and hopefully the white will prevail. I'm going to send the red a bit pink, but I missed that one. Now 
Now we're going to shade into the white with a grey. This is a mid grey. So if I get my other grey out, you can see the difference. So I'm going for a mid grey. Because the marble is reflecting everything around it, although it's glass, it's not clear. There is some colour in there. But I'm going to keep the edge, the left hand side white. I'm going to shade this grey in, introduce the grey at the top corner. So I'm going to come about midway across the marble. So your white, then your light, your mid grey, followed by your darker grey. Now really look at that reference picture. You can see here, I'm looking up at the screen so I can see the reference picture clearly as well. Where these darker areas are, it's very subtle. Kind of coming off a curve. From the outer edge. So there's a kind of V, very elongated V shape in there, white in the middle. Slowly, slowly building up the strength of colour. My pencil's so light against the paper. And that's what you want. Okay, one colour that I didn't mention in the list, and I, I decided this tonight while I was sitting here waiting for people to join, is a very light blue. Um, and it really is a smidgen. So if you haven't got one ready, go and grab a light blue. And I'm just going to give it the lightest tint of blue. In that white and grey, over that white and grey area. Nobody will know, that's how light it is that you'll use blue. I'm just going to try and neaten up my outside edge. I made a bit of a hash there. So you can see subtle colours starting to build up in this white clear area of the marble. And we can emphasise that when we bring in our dark band, it's really going to emphasise the light, it's the contrast, light to dark. And that's what this week's really been about. Okay, back to my white. I want to strengthen the white side now. So I'm going to add medium pressure, so light pressure, you're hardly touching the paper, then my, my hands naturally come in a bit further down the pencil, my mark making is getting tighter, so I'm doing tighter circles with that pencil to get more of this white down. Come along the edge of that dark band. And I'm also going to go really strong now, firm pressure. Up onto the point, along the edge of that red. Basically what I'm doing is burnishing the colours together and using the white to do that. And burnishing just means you're pushing all the pigments that you've used before 
together as you bring that firmer pressure over the top. And instead of seeing the texture of the paper, you should now start to see that lovely smooth waxiness of your pencils. We we'll go back with a little bit of blue again over the top. Just that hint of blue. Considering I used something to help me draw my circle, I didn't do very well. I'm just going to tidy up my edge a little bit. Just neatening out my circle. Okay, that's better. That's better. Keep your white in hand and we're going to come down that bottom area of the marble. So down here near the table, we've got this real strong highlight. So firm pressure up onto the point of your pencil. And let's get that lovely white in right next to your outline down that bottom. Okay, so having sorted that, I think we're pretty much there that side. I'm very annoyed at myself. It's hard to erase coloured pencils because mine's oil-based, so it's really not going to lift. I don't know why I'm bothering. Um, that I missed that highlight, but never mind. So I'm going to go to my poppy red. We're going to start bringing the brightness of this lovely glossy marble through. So to begin with, just like we did with the other red, the darker red, we're just going to shade gently. All over those areas. Avoid in the white. Just building up the strength for depth. And going, layering your colours will give you that sense of depth, richness of colour, rather than just going for one colour out of the box. So I can still see the texture of my paper. There's a little bit of red inside the highlight there. I'm, the brand of paper I'm using is Ingress. I normally use Canson for this, but um, sadly I've not kept my eye on my stock level and I'd run out. I love Canson paper. Um, so this one's got a bit more texture than I would normally work on. And even at this early stage, we're starting to get that lovely glassy look. Okay, I'm going to come up onto the point of my pencil 
just so that I can get this bottom part of the circle in. And then I'm going to shade away from that, all your marks up and away from that bottom edge, so you get rid of that line. The good thing with drawing with your coloured pencil is that until we start adding more pressure, these lines that we drew are still showing through. So we know it's, it's, it's our reference, so we've still got these lines. I can still see my lines coming through there. Excuse me, fidgeting, I've got a backache tonight. Okay. I'm going to give you a moment to do that. We can take our time tonight. There's only the three of us. I'm just going to um, pop to the kitchen. One second. I'll pause the recording while I'm gone. And then we'll see how you're getting on. See if the pace is okay. Okay. Actually, whilst we're... Um, let's, let's just fiddle around with the highlights over here um, before we move back to the marble. So I'm going to shade in the highlight on the table. It's not too strong. It's not as bright as this. Let's capture that whilst we're here. Find a fuzzy edge. And I'm going to bring my cadmium yellow in to play over the top of the white. There's a bit of yellow around here. And my sunburst yellow, this orangey yellow. There's also a hint of red in there. So with the poppy, with the lighter red of your reds, there's a little hint of red reflection. A bit more white again. Okay, right, let's go back to our main subject, to the marble. So I'm going to be using my poppy red, um, my sunburst yellow, possibly a bit of orange, all lots of colours, the dark red, and this one, the, the one I keep forgetting the name of, the um, Tuscan or in my case, Indian red. Okay, when we start putting the darks in, the light ones, it's going to tell us where we need to go. So I want to get the shadows in next. So let's go for our dark red. The darkest red, you've got a brownie red. And now I'm looking beside the light area in this central bit of our marble. And I'm using a medium pressure now. Where the colour gets lighter, the shadow gets lighter, the deeper colours gets lighter. I'm easing up the pressure. And then where it's darker, I'm pushing down a little bit harder against the paper. Tight circles I'm using now. And these rich darks through. Go down to the bottom of the marble. Just keep looking. Remember the trick to squint? I have, I have hit record, haven't I? Yes. <laughs> Half closing your eyes will help you spot these dark colours. 
The darks and lights always rise to the surface when you half close your eyes. And then the next bit, I've kind of drawn mine slightly wrong, but I'm going to pop it just here. Circles. see the richness of this dark and if we use this pencil neat it would be the wrong color but because we're layering over reds already reds already all along that top edge this darker color as well yeah it changes the color of your pencil because it's over the top of something else you use neat it would be too strong And then we have a band towards the left side. When it's quite a narrow strip, just go up and down on the pencil. Don't worry about your circles. It's when it's wider, you switch to a circular type motion. Shading, I'm shading quite gently over this side. I can just see a darker area along that edge. Where do we go next? Let's have a look. So we're quite dark there, and then it's really dark on the right. So come along that line. Firm pressure where it's really dark and then ease up as it comes out of the dark and I've kind of got this line of darkness coming around and up to the top I haven't done a colour pencil class in a while. It's been fun actually. It's clean. No cleaning up to do. Just pop your pencils away and you're done. Let me have a look. I think I need to take this a bit wider. looks about right. It's going to give us a really strong contrast. I want to take that slightly darker in places and you might freak out a little bit now, but I'm going to suggest the burnt umber, the brown. And I'm going to take some brown again because we're using brown over the top of the reds. It's going to take on a ready hue. But I really want to darken and intensify a couple of spots. I think my highlight's too big. It is too big, isn't it? I've drawn it too big. I'm just going to narrow my highlight down. Okay, so let's bring some lovely oranges into play and our bright red again. So we've done our darks. We're going to enrich the marble and try and get it to pop now. So I'm going to take my poppy red 
and I'm going to start adding more pressure. I want this to really bite against that dark and give us that richness. So tight circles, firm pressure now. We should be seeing the paper disappearing. And I'm going to take it over the darks as well. Okay, it won't um, lighten them as such because it, it, it's just not got the power to, but it will just unify everything. So I'm taking that poppy red over the darks as well. Look how rich that is. Right, circles. You don't want to press so hard that you're indenting the paper, okay? Just a nice firm pressure. Rich, glossy red. So with the colour pencils, there's a lot of times where you're going to push and pull, you're going to play, bring other colours in, layer. The reason I'm telling you not to push too hard is that you can fill the tooth of the paper so it can't take any more. There we go. Mine's looking quite dark on the screen. It's not that dark in reality. Must be the angle. Looks like a cherry. Okay, I'm going to take my orange next. I'm looking for the brighter areas now. along that seam, that line that we drew earlier, come up there. I'm not going to take this over everywhere, just the lighter, richer, more ruby areas. And this is my orange. I wonder why I can't get the colour to look right on the screen. Maybe when I take a photo of it earlier, you'll see the true colours that are on my paper. Okay, then my yellow, my yellow orange, my sunburst. Again, looking for those bright, so that edge over on the right hand side, really working that along that curve and to lighten it further I'm going to go back to my white and I'm going to take some white in. You're not going to see a major difference when you bring white over the colours. It's going to help us burnish the pencils together but it will slightly lighten so we get that shine along the edge. I'm just adjusting that shape back to my dark red. Okay, where was I going? So my yellow, 
I'm going to intensify this stripe. Both yellows, the brighter one and the orangey one. I'm just battling to get that highlight back in. It's kind of there. Okay, let's have, let's sit back and have a little look. Where I want the red even lighter, I'm going to take my cadmium yellow over the top. Red and yellow will make it more orangey. It's getting richer. And the texture of the paper, the surface should be starting to look really smooth. I'm just going to bring a little bit of white through over the top of the reds along this seam, this um, shiny line that's coming up here, one of the ones we drew right at the beginning, just using the white right on its tip, I'm just going back over that line. And then with the poppy red. So white first and then your poppy red. I'm just having a look, adjusting, tweaking. Flicking from my reds through my yellows. So if you are using a wax based pencil, it's not always obvious, you can use one of these colourless um, burnishers and go over the surface to blend everything together. Because I'm using wax based ones, I'm going to use my sunburst yellow like a burnisher. So you can do either. You don't need one of these. You can use one of your lighter colours. It's not going to affect the overall scheme of things. But now I'm going to take this sunburst yellow. And it's basically given us um, a thin covering, but mainly acting to push everything together. To lose any more of that paper that might be showing. Just a medium pressure, you don't have to push hard. The word burnish kind of makes you think you've got to, it's like um, doing stone rubbings or something, grass rubbings. I'm just putting a little bit of indigo blue in that dark area, very gently, darkening that really dark vein, maybe a little bit here. Remember blue and brown, we used brown earlier, will give you a grey. I didn't tell you, um, I very rarely use black, I rather mix the blue and brown together. Indigo blue and the brown. Okay, so talking of indigo blue and the brown, it's perfect timing because we're going to bring this band in. And I want you to go in first with your brown, dark brown. 
make sure it's nice and sharp because we want to get a crisp line across here. And along that edge, and then it disappears behind the red and then pops out again in the yellow. And then come the other side, come down to the bottom, but please try and retain that white that we put in earlier. There's a bit in the middle where it goes to the bottom, either side of the white. And then I'm going to fill in, just shade in gently the rest of that band. It's quite light in places when you look really carefully. I'm going to use this brown to narrow down that hint of white at the bottom of the marble. Let's come ever closer to the edge of the marble. I need to make it a little bit wider. Close to the edge, don't lose the white. I'll pop my white back in again. And then your blue over the top, particularly in the really dark areas at the side, on the left, in this. Halfway along the band, it's darker towards the bottom of the marble. Now I'm just going to take my white over the top, through that band, through that middle, sort of just above halfway, just to lighten that bit up. As soon as you put that dark in, it makes such a difference. I've gone over my white a little bit, so I'm going to try and drop that out. There we go. I'm just putting the tiniest bit of red in my highlight. I just saw it. I looked up at the screen and I could see that in the reference photo when I looked really close. Okay. Wow. We're getting through this nicely. Okay. Now, the next thing that's going to help our marble look real is grounding it to the surface. We're going to use the brown and blue again, the same two colours we just used for our band and we're going to shade really gently back to shading gently but just before I do that I'm just going to bring that on the point of the pencil and just make sure the edge of the marble where that white is is nicely put in before I start shading come along that edge it's not actually the marble it's the table and the blue over the top. Shadows are always at their darkest, right under the object. Add in a little bit of blue on that side as well. Okay, so nice gentle shading, relax into it. Loosen your grip on the pencil. What we want to do is that as we come towards the edge of the shadow, I want you to really loosen very, very lightly with your brown. So it almost fades into your paper. And then more intense 
in the centre of the shadows, in the middle area, in the core of the shadow. I'm just going to sharpen that line again. There we go. So brown. I'm going to let it, the brown, very softly come in, really softly. You can see I'm not putting much colour down here. We'll gradually build up. Let it go a little bit into your yellows you put down earlier, but don't lose the yellows completely. And remember, when you come to the, each edge of that shadow, very, very softly, a hint, a hint of colour. And then layer up, keep building those circles as you come in. And then you use a screen. It really is a long shadow. It gets lighter again the further this way it comes. Brown is a much nicer colour to use for the shadow than just reaching for a grey or a black. And we're going to be taking our blue over the top to give it the look of a grey. But here and there, you're still going to spot some brown coming through. It's just a nicer way than just, as I said, right at the beginning, just reaching for a colour and putting it on on its own. I'm just softening around those edges now. Once you've got your shape, more or less, right? I'm just going to add a little bit more at the top there. Very, very lightly. Okay, so I want the darker area now. So I'm looking up at the screen at that reference picture. This edge here stays very light, and just within that, we've got this darker, sort of an egg shape, isn't it? The reflection, the shadow. Still with the brown at this stage. And there are spots within and reflection, the shadow, that are darker than others. So just here in the middle, a bit darker. And then start building up your colour. Go again for those darker areas, really dark close to our marble. Okay, and then switch to your indigo and you're just going to repeat what you've just done. Add in more, get that rich, beautiful grey close to the marble. 
Be careful not to go over that line. I can't wait to see you, your ladies finished work. It's exciting. You can see that illusion because obviously the um, the pencils wax or oil base can't physically mix that much. It's the optical mixing that's going on as you lay the blue over the top of the brown. So it is a bit different to pastels or watercolor or oils in that respect. We're seeing one color through another. I'm going to let a little bit of my blue go over this white area. And as it hits the white, it's going to be quite a light blue in that reflective light. Okay, a couple of things we need to do now. Um, I can see some really deep red showing through. So I'm going to take my poppy red. And the reason I'm using the poppy red is we've got a lot of dark down already. When I'm really looking at that photo up in the top corner of your screen, I can see more red coming through. I'm going to take the red over close to the marble, that dark section. I'm not pushing hard. You can see my hands back. A long pencil, just bringing a bit more red through, and a touch more orange, I think. Dropping my pencils everywhere. One second, ladies. I just scuttle around for my orange because I need that. <laughs> okay, now we need to burnish this because we've been shading quite lightly. Um, I can see lots of paper, you can see that texture there showing through. And I'm going to use my grey. To burnish okay and um, you can uh, use either the very light or the next one to it so it's not really going to dramatically change the color I'm going to use this one see how it see how I go and now with a firm pressure going in avoiding the very lights because you don't want to lose that making sure and pushing these colours together. If you have a clear burnisher, you can use that. And all a burnisher is, is the wax um, crayon pencil without any colour in it. So you're just putting a layer of wax over. I'm going to use the lighter one as well, the light grey. Fill in the tooth. It may mean when you use a very a much lighter colour to burnish that you have to go back to your dark, so that's all fine. back into the white to go over that highlight area really work that white back in white is always the firmest pressure
can just observe in some areas I'm really pleased with. Um, I'm just going to darken close to the marble again. Got my indigo. Darker here, and at the edge, in this ref ref uh, reflection, I can't talk. <laughs> I'm going to take more brown here. I see more browns and greys because it's a red marble, there's more warm colors coming through that shadow. I'm taking a bit more brown over the top of the blue and the grey. That's better. I'm going back to my mid grey. I'm going to carry on softening that edge where the shadow continues over the table gets weaker. There's a couple of spots out to the side I see. So I can just take that shadow and let it gently disappear. So choose a colour that's close to whatever colour paper you're using. If you're using white, just use a grey and softly, softly take your grey out. Um, I want a bit more of a shadow. My marble just got a feel. I've just got realised that my shadow's not come under quite enough. I'm going to take it back a bit further by the red. It was just looking like it was floating a bit and not steady on the table. I'm just changing the position of my shadow slightly. Blue and brown. It's been a long day. And again, soften it with my grey. Because I slightly um, positioned my shadow incorrectly my highlights are actually in the wrong place that one should have been over here a bit more but only you and i know <laughs> that's a bit better so before we finish tonight i'm just going to go back over with my orange to brighten up a few areas, just we've not seen the marble for a while, we've been working in the shadow, but kind of come back with fresh eyes and see if there's any adjustments you want to make. A bit of that lovely bright yellow in. I'm kind of having a battle here. Because the screen doesn't look like what I'm seeing with my eyes, and I'm trying to, to make it look the same, but it's never going to happen. Just 
There we go. I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, a couple of minutes for you guys to finish off. We've done really well. I mean, other things that you might want to do is just look at that light area and add a bit more white back in to that glass. Go back over your highlights. Pop those in. I'm still trying to get that one I missed. So there we have it. Our, pen our pencil. <laughs> Our marble, now that's better, now you can see the colour better. Our marble in coloured pencils on a toned background, or white, as some of um, some of you may be using. I hope you enjoyed colouring along with me, and I hope to see you again soon. Okay, bye. Bye.